So I've been using Virtual DJ for uh, a few months now, probably since May. On my own I found a couple things that haven't been in videos yet, so I thought I'd do my own video and maybe help somebody out. After using it for a little bit, I went out and bought myself a DJ controller. I went with the Hercules DJ Control Steel, uh, which comes with Virtual DJ 5.2 VLE Edition. Um, and then the Pro upgrade is $69 or US or something like that. Uh, but I am using my 20 day trial that comes with the software. And um, so I can show you some of the differences. But I'll mainly be using the LE screen uh, to because I like it better. Anyways, here we go. Okay, so here we have Virtual DJ, the LE edition. Um, first of all, I apologize for the low quality of the camera, the glare. Um, I don't have a proper camera, but you'll get the idea anyways. Um, first, you, before you start, you want to organize your music. So you have the title, the artist, and over here it says BPM. And right now there's no number there. But since you want to find out the BPM, you load the, tra the track onto the deck and it'll automatically calculate your BPM. It takes a minute to load because my computer's a little bit slow. But, um, there. And then you can either drag it in, or if you have the Q select buttons, and you have it selected, you can just double click it, and it'll load up. It loads up se uh, quicker the second time because it's not trying to calculate the BPM over and over again. Um, the only problem is that the BPM reader is not 100%, um, but it gives you a general idea. Unless it's below 80.1 BPM, and then it normally doubles the number. For example, Iron Man, which is by Black Sabbath, um, has a really low BPM, but it says on this program that it has a BPM of 155 or something like that. But it's pretty obvious that it's not 155 BPM. Um, if it is not right and you want to edit it, all you have to do is let, uh, right click on the song and then there's five options. you got preview, file infos, BPM, file operations, and remove search from, remove from search DB. Uh, you go into BPM and it says reanalyze or manual edit. Click on manual edit and then there's you can edit the phase and the BPM, edit the grid, and edit an auto mix. Um, that's just basic information. I haven't really looked into it a whole lot. So, um, But knowing, other than that, knowing the key and the length of the song, most DJs find that to be fairly important information also. Um, I couldn't find, like it took me a little bit to figure out how to do that, but it's really easy. I'm just a little bit slow. All you have to do is right click on the title artist BPM bar and you can add, there's a whole list here, there's title artist, album, genre, BPM, key, you want to add key, um, length, you can add uh, bit rate, the year, comments. Uh, play count, first scene, first play, last play, drive, file path, file name, file type, file size, file date, linked video, uh, Camelot. If you haven't heard of the Camelot program, I'll show you that, in a, or I'll show you that in a minute. And there's also Composer. Um, I like to have this in a different order, so I click on Order at the very bottom. And then I can put this one way up here. And you can just edit wherever you want to put your, uh, whatever order you would like your information in. And then click OK. So now I have length, the length of the track, the BPM of the track the key of the track and the Camelot key. Um, 
I'll show you the Camelot. There's a Camelot key guide. Oh, there we go. And this is a picture of it. I'll put a link in the description. It gives you numbers to represent um, the keys. And with it, there's you can um, easily sort your music to, in key and uh, with matching keys that uh, blend well together. Usually one on either side. Um, Jonathan, uh, the DJ tutor, Elliskins, did a, a video series on mixing on beat, which uses this program. And um, I'll put a link in the description for that as well. Then, if you load back up Virtual DJ, you can uh, organize your music. I'll pull up a list of songs here. I haven't got a whole lot of music on this. CD are on this computer yet, so I'll use uh, my I'll use my stick drive, and I got a bit of a list here that's already loaded up and uh, ready to go of all the songs. And uh, you can order it by key, your Camelot key, your BPM, your length, your title, your artist, whatever you want to order it by, and you can reverse order it also. Um, I usually order it by the Camelot key, well, BPM, and then the Camelot key, because then you get your, all your BPMs from fastest to slowest, or slowest to fastest, in your keys. The reason I like the LE screen compared to the Pro screen is because of the pre-faders, which are right here in the middle. I don't know if you can see my mouse point to it, but I'm sure you can see them on the screen. And um, turn my volumes down. And the Pro screen does not have these. Well, it does, but they're not the same. Whereas, if I press play on this song, you can see the little green lights bouncing up and down there. And uh, if I turn up the gains, it goes up into the yellow and the red. If you like to follow the, D, uh, the 0 dB rule, this is a lot easier because you just turn it down, turn it down, turn it down, and then it's bouncing just barely touching into the yellow. Now if you switch over to the Pro screen, oh, the LE screen also has a CPU reader, which you were seeing earlier when I was loading up the songs. It tells you how much, how hard your CPU is working, which mine is really slow apparently. Um, if you switch over to the Pro screen, and you look at your pre-fade level and you turn it up it stays constantly blue so you don't know where exactly your 0 dB is you know it's somewhere in the middle there but if you want to maximize it it's just personal preference because I like to have the pre-faders the only reason right now that I would switch to uh, that I would upgrade to Pro would be the ability to record and split your tracks um, you have features, you have your sampler features, which you can record samplers, pre-record samplers. Um, your effects can be controlled in the pro screen, like your beat grid and your oh, your beat grid, your flanger, your backspin speed and length, um, the basic stuff. They have uh, there's other videos out there about that, and then your record feature. Um, with the LE edition, they don't. I couldn't find a configuration. Uh, you link up, you click on the configuration, and you can split into multiple uh, files. And then you click on auto split on crossfade. So when you're using the crossfader, it splits automatically. Um, that'd be the only reason, just so I can make my own CDs uh, for personal use or whatever. But I, other than that, I don't really need the pro version. Uh, you have your playlist that comes with the pro version and a side list, but it's nothing too extravagant because I normally have my playlist set up somewhere else so that I can read it. Switch back to the LE screen, and all your basic features are right here. Buttons can be switched by clicking the arrows and you can change what you want the buttons to do 
Um, there's a whole the whole list is there. Other videos showcasing what all those buttons do and all the effects and whatever else you can do with this. So I'm not even going to bother with that right now. Um, I'd suggest downloading the 20 day trial and playing around with your mouse and keyboard and then if you like it go out and buy a controller uh, if you have the money. So there's a quick look at a couple of the features on Virtual DJ 5.2 uh, although uh, the vir uh, version 6.0 is out now uh, I gather most of the features are probably the same if you're interested in knowing more about the Hercules DJ Control Steel, um, there are a couple videos out there already, but I'm planning on doing my own video on the controller soon.